Ja, herzlich willkommen zum Webinar Professional English Skills Made Easy. Use TikTok, Netflix, YouTube und Co. Mein Name ist Ellen Aweis und ich bin bei den karl duisberg zentren in Saarbrücken ähm, die Leitung vor Ort. Bevor ich gleich an meinen kanadischen Kollegen Jean-Pierre in Köln weitergebe, möchte ich euch alle bitten, vielleicht im kurz mal im Chat zu schreiben, ob ihr schon mit Netflix, YouTube, TikTok oder auch einem der anderen Streamingdienste Erfahrung gesammelt habt, was den Bereich Sprachenlernen angeht oder Sprache verbessern und vielleicht auch von wo ihr euch heute zugeschaltet habt. Das gibt uns nämlich auch die Gelegenheit zu schauen, dass ähm, der Chat funktioniert und achtet vielleicht darauf, dass ihr, wenn ihr etwas schreibt, auf, ähm, an alle Zuhörer und Teilnehmer schreibt, damit es auch alle mitlesen können und auch im Laufe des äh, Vortrags von JP werden wir am Ende gerne die Fragen beantworten. Ja, da sehe ich Berlin, München. Sehr cool. Ja, mir freut sich sogar, <lacht> niemand aus dem Saarland freut sich, dass ich hier aus dem Saarland bin, aus Frankfurt, aus Mannheim, aus Landsberg, Berlin, Marburg, Limburg, Augsburg, also quer durch die Republik. Und jemand möchte sogar Popcorn haben, JP. Das haben wir jetzt nur virtuell heute dabei. Aber vielleicht kann ja noch jemand irgendwo in die Küche springen und sich sein Popcorn holen. Da schaut noch jemand zu, der sich für das Fach Französisch interessiert. Das ist natürlich jetzt heute, ähm, du machst es gleich auch auf Englisch, JP, ja. ähm, aber natürlich lässt sich das alles auch übertragen auf Französisch, Spanisch oder jede andere Fremdsprache. Aus dem Vogtland, aus Italien jemand, super. Hm. Ja, Mannheim und wenig Erfahrung. Videos werden gerne gesehen, YouTube-Videos, Netflix-Serien auf Englisch. Ja, aus Hessen, aus Hallertau bei München, aus Stuttgart und auch mit Erfahrung. Also quer durch die Republik, aus der Türkei sogar. Ich hoffe, das ist okay, dass der erste Teil auf Englisch ist. Ich werde das gerne am Ende auch nochmal auf Deutsch zusammenfassen, also nur stichwortartig. Und dann würde ich sagen, here we go. JP, du kannst loslegen. Thank you very much, Ellen. Um, I will be speaking in English for now. However, should I be speaking too fast, please feel free to write in the chat and I will speak a bit um, slower. Um, my name is Jean-Pierre Wallet. Yes, I have a difficult, strange name. It is correct. I come from Canada. I grew up in a family um, that speaks French in English. Um, and because of that, I have taught French for 20 years now, even more than this, um, and also English, um, university levels and companies whatsoever. What you really need to know about me, however, is that I have a passion. I have a passion about learning, but also about teaching. However, more specifically about teaching and learning languages. And the reason I'm here today is because I want to teach you a strategy. I want to show you it is possible to learn languages um, in a very easy way, or at least a very fun way. I hope you can learn something from that. Learning languages, and this is my message for today, is no magic. It doesn't have to be hard, but it doesn't have to be um, something that is out of another world. Um, the way it is taught today in school, the more traditional way of learning languages, um, falls, falls a little short when it comes to my mind. And this is what I want to teach you today, how to use it, how to become the language. We are made out of flesh and out of blood. This is what I want to say when it comes to learning languages is no magic. You can look at the book and think, okay, now I know English. Um, now I know French. Now I know Italian. Think about this. Um, I think most of you have spent maybe eight, 10 years in school learning English or another language. And you might think, okay, I don't know the language well enough or I don't feel like I could go to America and learn and speak something very well. It's because the way the traditional school is built is not optimal for learning language. Okay, 
I say we're made of flesh, we're made of blood. So this is my strategy. Let me explain you to something. You see here is a child on the bike. Maybe you remember when you learned how to ride a bike. Mm -hmm. Maybe you understand the principle of riding a, riding a bike is not very difficult. Sit on this, look forward, and then go. Mm -hmm. It does not work this way. Maybe if you remember, you left a little left, a little right. There's a lot of meandering going on. This is not the way you learn how to ride a bike, but why? The principle is easy. So how come it doesn't go so fast? It's because we are muscles, we are organic. Your muscles need to know where to go. And this is why you need to practice. You need to do it again and again. And you need to learn that I will not fall. This is the way it works. Look at children on the street. It does not look natural at first. It's not a natural thing to do to ride on the bike. Monkeys don't do that. Another example that I have for you is writing. Maybe you remember in first grade grabbing a pen, you have it in your hand and your teacher is writing A or whatever alphabet you use and you want to write it down on this paper and you go, yeah, that does not really look like an A. It's the same like you draw. If you draw a house when you're three years old, it doesn't look like a house. <laughs> But writing the same way, by doing again and again and again, you will look like you know what you're doing. You can try again, maybe when you broke your arm or something, writing with your left hand or your right hand, depending if you're left-handed or right-handed, um, it feels very strange. Your other hand does not know how to do that very well. But if you broke your arm and you try to do this for a couple of weeks, you will notice that your other arm will also learn how to write properly. There are so many examples about this. I mean, the way you learn how to play piano, the way you learn how to drive um, stick shift, um, working with the clutch, these are all different muscle things. So I want you today to think about your brain the same way. Your brain is organic. So why do you expect your brain to do something right away, even if explained to you, oh, by the way, this is the rule he, she, it, das, es, muss, mit, done, you can do it now. It's not the way the brain works. So the language is the same way. What am I talking about? I'm talking about repetition. Doing something again and again and again until it becomes organic, until it becomes natural. This is when I ask you to be patient. We say, or experts say, you need to learn or hear a word about 50 times before you can use it yourself. So if you, heard, if you hear somebody saying this word again and again, you will be able to, from the context, understand what it means. Languages is the same. How do I want you to be exposed to a language as often as possible and that it works? You can do it through discipline, which means, okay, I put my Apple watch on and I say in 20 minutes, I have to read one word in English and I have to do that for the next 10 years. This will not work. This is not possible. This is not a way it works because it's not fun. Maybe some people love discipline and have discipline. I don't have so much, but it depends of course on your character. My strategy is, and this is this really works, is to make something fun. If you make something that is fun, you'll want to do it. That means you will want to learn and you won't have to say, whoa, JP, I have to go in my book and I have to learn English. How do we make it fun? I say, you have to make the language your hobby. You already have hobbies. So, Maybe some of them can be done in English or in the language that you would like to learn. Of course, today I speak about English and I speak about Netflix and other streaming um, services. So English is a little more, is a little easier because they have a lot more on television and everything, but also French or Italian. I mean, for Netflix, for example, you can have many different languages. So this will work in every language you wish. Um, 
So a language is something that is alive. It is not something you learn on a stool and not something you will say, okay, go and gone, hit, hit, hit. This will work. These are tools you will use later. How come do school teach like that? I think it's because it's oriented on the traditional system. It's because the teachers have the word. You will have 20 to 30 people in the classroom. If you imagine, if we say, okay, now everybody speaks, of course that does not work. So the, the system has to be adapted in a way, go when gone, you can give, um, you can hand into a paper and your teacher will say, hmm, wrong, bad, bad. My mom did that. My mom is a teacher, was a teacher and she brought her things at home and I had to do the work. So of course, this is all organized um, in the way that it is feasible. So I say, this is one part. Learning the grammar is very important. However, a language is something that is alive, is something you need to use. So you need to hear it. You need to use it as often as possible. But I say also, you need to love it. Because if it's something that you love, it is something that you will always go back to. This is my strategy. Watch things in English. Watch things in English. How? It's easy today. That is not something I had when I was a kid. When I was a kid, there was three channels on television. It came what came. Today you have services, Netflix, other ones, Amazon Prime, Facebook. You have YouTube. You can watch what you want, when you want it, in the language that you want it. How do we use it to learn a language? Easy. You use the original language, English. This is only one part. Yes, this is difficult at first. And you need a certain level. You cannot start at zero and be able to, okay, now I will watch the news. This is not the way it works. But you, if you have a certain level, B1, B2, so intermediate level, you'll be able to um, watch movies. To help you, and this is very important, even if you think if you're good enough, put the subtitles in English as well. Which means you watch the movie in English and you can read at the same time. This is a fantastic exercise. You can read, you know how the word is written, and you also can hear it, and you also have fun because you, cho you chose something that you like watching, a series or a movie. What a wonderful thing. It's a fantastic exercise, something I didn't have in the past. You do it when you want it, you watch what you want, and you can read at the same time. A trick, how to do this properly? Do not pause every time there's a word you don't know. Just watch the whole thing. When you learn a language, you don't learn it from the grammar rules right away. You learn it by imitation, which means if you hear it again and again and again, you will know what it means. But also you'll hear you, from the context, you'll be able to understand, oh, that's what it means. Be a baby, learn the same way. So that's one part, watching. The middle part, the one that I wrote, that I picture here, listening. Also things today that you can do, um, podcasts. This is a radio program you can listen to when you feel. This is Corona time. You cannot go, you cannot do anything. Many people go outside and walk, do the same thing. Choose a podcast that you like and listen to it. It's the same idea. There's no reading there, but, so, but it's still a good exercise. You could also um, choose an audio book. Easy thing to do. You find in streaming um, services as well, you have Spotify, you also have Apple Music, they have audio books on there. I'll come back to all of these later, by the way. And the last thing you'd say, you know, old fashioned, reading. Yes, it's also something that still exists today. <laughs> books, the thing that you can find and gathers dust also works for learning English. I think watching TV and watching with the subtitles is a more complete exercise, but that one also will help. Let's start by watching series, watching television. Yes, it's one thing you can choose whatever you feel like, but not everything will be helpful. 
you have to be able to choose the right thing. So you start from the beginning. You're at home tonight and you think, I will start something watching in English. Where do I start? Not everything can work. You have to find something that will bring some value to you. But the first thing you will notice when you start watching English, it sounds strange. Why? It's because if you listen, if you watch something that's been synchronized or dubbed, the sound is much better. The sound is optimal. These voices were recorded in a studio. They take the movie, Transformers, they remove all the sound, and then they put it back again with a voice in German, with a microphone, and it is perfect. So it's easy to understand the voice. It's easy to hear these people. In English, you have that poor man outside the camera, and you have the real sound. You have the real voice of these people. So it's a bit strange at first. There's a lot of other noises. So don't be disturbed by that. Um, you have a bus that goes by and you have an apple that follows the wind. You have a lot more going on and the voices are a little more qu quieter than um, the other ones that you have when it's synchronized. So that's the first step. It'll take a little while to get used to this. Yes, Bruce Willis sounds a little girlier in real than his German counterpart, but He's still a very good actor. And there's a reason why these people all win Oscars because they also use their voice in a very special way. This is very important. And once you get used to this, I guarantee you, you cannot watch synchronized movies ever again. Okay. Streaming services, I say, which one can you use? Any one you like. You have Netflix. I talked about Amazon Prime. Um, in North America, we have more, but I'm not sure exactly what you have here in, in Germany. I use Netflix all the time. You have, I think, Disney Plus is another one. Uh, you can watch YouTube. You have YouTube channels. You have TikTok. You can watch the stories as long as they speak English. YouTube is a bit more complicated about the subtitles, by the way, but you also have a function about the subtitles. However, it is um, an automatic function and it's a voice recognition software, so it writes whatever it thinks it understands. It works pretty well, but sometimes you have a mistake, so it has to be careful. Instagram stories as well. How to choose the perfect series? First of all, it has to be the appropriate level. What is the appropriate level? This is the level you have, or maybe a little more difficult, a little higher, I mean. So let's say, B1. If you're not familiar with this, I think you, there's many tests online you can do to kind of estimate what level you have. This is the European uh, system. Everything is organized from 1 to C2. You can find information on that, but you have to know your level. So that means you must be able to understand most of the things. If it's too difficult, I guarantee you, you will stop. So find something that is appropriate to your level, something you will understand. It has something, to, it has to be fun. It must be something you like. Just because your friend said this series is fantastic and you wanna do it, if you don't like it, you'll stop after two days. So you have to make your goals realistic. Find something you love. I don't care if it's the Teletubbies. If the Teletubbies is something that's great for you, watch it. Do people know what Teletubbies are today? <laughs> I'm not sure, <laughs> but you can watch that. Um, so if it's fun, it's something you love, it is also something that would become regular. So regularity here is the key. What do I mean by regularity? Once a week is not enough. If you do once a week, two hours, this is not how the brain will readapt, reconnect. You have to do something every day. Five minutes every day is a lot better than two hours a week in one go. So series. I think the North American format is 22 minutes. So that's great. It's short enough. You watch that. You watch one episode a day and you're golden. Three things. Appropriate level. It has to be fun. So it become regular. And then you have a learning value. That said, the most important part of this presentation, this is my top three, JP top three, um, of the series I recommend you to watch to learn your English or to improve your 
English skills. Number three, because it has intermediate level, so B1 to B2, it has simple situations. Why is that important? Because if the situations are too complicated, then you will concentrate on this and you don't know what's going on and then language will not work. It has to be a realistic use of language. By that I mean, this is the way the people speak on the, week, on the street. If they speak exactly like that, then it has some learning value. Um, this, episode, I mean, this series also uses the languages realistically. Um, they learn, you would learn as well about American culture, and more importantly, why Canadians are better than Americans. Of course, on number three, we are learning about how I met your mother. I think it's a well-known, it's relatively old now, but it's easier to find on Netflix. Not very, it's not very expensive, although also um, that means um, the story is easy. You don't have to watch every episode to understand what's going on, but there's a larger um, story to it. Um, I think, I think everybody knows this thing. Language is neutral, easy to understand. Number two, a little more difficult. Um, this is more appropriate for the high intermediate level. So for B1, B2 to C1, that's almost a, that's advanced actually. It has um, a more challenging language than the other two. This is British English. So if you want to learn how to speak like the queen, that is the series you should watch. This is very addictive, which means you will want to watch it again and again and continue and you will not be able to stop. And this good way to learn about the English culture, I am talking about the crown. It's good. It's also part of um, scandals and things you should know about the queen. You should become <clears throat> a Netflix expert, we say, so you know more than most people do because you watch a series. Number one, this is an intermediate level, B1. It also has some challenging language to it because of the way they speak and what about it? What about this speak? This is global English. Global English meaning that you have different accents from all over the place. India, maybe Latin America. This is a situation comedy, so it is funny internationally. You do not have to be so uh, um, an expert in the American culture. This is also realistic use of language and the plot, so the story is simple. I am of course talking about the Big Bang Theory. I think it's a very thing, very interesting series to watch and you should definitely watch it. So what should you watch? It doesn't matter what. It can be documentaries, watch our planet, fantastic. David Attenborough, wonderful speaker, great words. Watch this for the subtitles. I guarantee you, you will love it. Series are recommended because they are relatively short. Films, they're great, but they're a little longer. Musicals, because they're singing, watch something you love. I recommend series short, something you know well, so you will understand right away. Global English to learn different kinds of accents. You should avoid, however, uh, some things that are based on popular culture. By that, I mean, you need to be an American to understand what's going on. There's so much American culture or an English culture that you wouldn't understand the plot. That will get in the way. Complicated stories like House, um, native, speakers, native speakers don't know what's going on. So it's also hard for people who learn. Also strong accents have to be avoided. Maybe you think it's cool to have a Scottish accent, and it is, but it's hard to learn. It's hard to understand. Game of Thrones, I'm sorry. Every character has a different English accent. Um, it's great, but it's not the best if you're a beginner. Other way, things to listen to, I recommend podcasts. I told you earlier, my, something of your interests, find something you love, a topic that you know about so you'll have the right vocabulary. And if you can, find neutral language. So not something with too strong of an accent again, not Texas, not Manchester. Find something that is more neutral. Canadians, for example. Good tip, BBC Six Minute English. It's an app, it's a podcast, it's a Facebook <laughs> club, or what do you say, group. You can, um, they give you six minutes of talk every week and explain five to six different words. You can learn about it. You can go online on their website uh, to have the PDF, so you can also read. It's a wonderful exercise. Also on Facebook, they post every 
day, two, three exercises and different things that you didn't know you know. Reading books, that's not the only way. Surprise, surprise. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. You can read books, but you could also, I would recommend short stories, something you will finish and not stop in the middle. Things you've read before and you want to read again. Or bilingual books, that means left in English, right in German. That's possible, you can find those. Um, be careful with Harry Potter. It's very difficult if you've never read them before because you don't know what's fantasy and you don't know what's real. So you don't want to go in the streets and tell a spell on somebody. So also avoid classical books like Moby Dick. They're really long, very difficult. Um, don't do what I call the status symbol reads. This is like, oh, by the way, I read New York Times every morning. Um, that's hard. You don't have to do that. Just do it for yourself or something that's very long that you will never finish, like Game of Thrones. This is my tip for you. Read as well, because reading, it might be not be cool. Set your phone in English. Set your PlayStation in English. Whatever that you click on, put in English, you will be exposed to it. You will see the word again and again and again, and you will learn it. Also, why don't you talk to Siri in English? Or Amazon, what is it called? I forgot. Talk to Amazon. Alexa. <laughs> Alexa, that's it. Talk to Alexa. If she understands you in English, you're great. <laughs> so all of these tricks are great, but they're all passive, which means you only hear, you only read. This is not the only way of learning English or learning a language. That's correct. But it's a really good beginning. The only thing that, the other thing you have to do, you also have to produce, you have to talk. And this is where we come in. You need a conversation course. You need to talk to somebody. Maybe you have a friend that can speak English. That's great. Otherwise, find something, find a course that can make you talk, make you converse. So for the next, thank you very much. I will now pass to Ellen to tell us what we can offer you to make you speak. Also, vielen Dank, JP, für die vielen Tipps und Tricks, die du uns eben gegeben hast. Ähm, ja, wir hat, du hast es mehrmals gesagt, ähm, wichtig beim Selbstlernen ist eben ähm, der Aspekt der Selbstmotivation und das feste Zeitfenster. Ähm, das betrifft im Übrigen nicht nur das Lernen mit Streamingdiensten, sondern ist ja auch sonst allgemein gültig. Ähm, die, nichtsdestotrotz ähm, ist es natürlich auch wichtig zu gucken, bis wohin kann ich selber lernen und ab wann ist es vielleicht besser, das mit einem Lehrer zu machen. Das angeleitete Lernen hat eben auch Vorteile, weil man einen gewissen Fortschritt, eine gewisse Progression gegeben hat. Und wenn wir einen guten Lehrer vor uns haben, der berücksichtigt dann natürlich auch die vielen unterschiedlichen Lernertypen. Das kennt ihr wahrscheinlich auch aus der Schule. Der eine lernt lieber in der Gruppe, der andere möchte lieber mehrmals was abschreiben oder hören oder das im Fernsehen ansehen oder in einem Video. Also alle Sinne sollten beim Lernen aktiviert werden. Und Gruppenarbeit ist natürlich auch was Schöneres, als allein in seinem Kämmerchen zu sitzen. Die karl duisberg zentren bieten verschiedene Programme an, um seine Sprachkenntnisse zu verbessern. Das fängt an beim Auslandsaufenthalt, sei er lang oder kurz, einem Kurzstudium im Ausland, einem Highschool hier bis hin zu Programmen für Firmen und Berufstätige. Wir haben uns heute einfach nur einen kleinen Teil rausgesucht, von dem wir hoffen, dass er die heutige Zielgruppe so ein bisschen betrifft und Interesse weg, dass es zum einen oder es wären zum einen unsere Sprachcamps für ähm, 11 bis 14-Jährige am Bodensee. Wir haben übrigens auch immer hier die Webseite eingeblendet, falls das jemand, die, die URL eingeblendet, falls jemand das direkt ansehen möchte. Das sind Sprachcamps mit Englischkurs am Morgen und Freizeitaktivitäten am Nachmittag. Das geht vom Hip-Hop über Musical bis hin zum Fußballtraining, einer gemeinsamen Unterkunft, einer Rundumbetreuung. Und das bieten wir seit vielen Jahren an und mittlerweile so erfolgreich, dass wir es auch als Deutschkurs anbieten und wo Jugendliche aus dem Ausland teilnehmen, sodass man quasi dann auch noch die Möglichkeit hat, seine Englischkenntnisse mit Jugendlichen aus aller Welt ähm, zu, ähm, zu üben. Genau. Das nächste wären jetzt gerade im Zeichen der Pandemie, es hat alle getroffen, Schule ist ausgefallen, hat nur unregelmäßig stattgefunden, Englischunterricht fand wahrscheinlich auch nicht regelmäßig statt. Hier haben wir uns einen, bieten wir an einen Online-Englischkurs für Jugendliche ab 15 Jahren bis hin zum Abitur als Vorbereitung vielleicht für das nächste Schuljahr. 
ähm, findet nachmittags statt, ist wochenweise buchbar und berücksichtigt auch verschiedene ähm, Niveaustufen, also Klasse 9 bis 10 von A2 bis B1 oder dann der Abiturjahrgang mit B2 ähm, und ein bisschen höher. Mit Blick auf die Uhr hier noch ein Angebot für junge Menschen, die vielleicht mit der Schule schon fertig sind in der Ausbildung, im Berufsleben oder kurz vor Ende des Studiums stehen. Wir wissen, das hat vorhin auch übrigens jemand im Chat geschrieben, dass in der Schule nur Grammatik unterrichtet wird. Das ist ein großes Problem für viele junge Menschen, die in das Berufsleben starten, erst recht, wo heute alles global vernetzt ist und man dann ins kalte Wasser geworfen wird. Man muss an einer Telefonkonferenz vielleicht auf Englisch teilnehmen und fühlt sich da unsicher. Hier haben wir kurze, knappe Workshops mit 16 Trainingseinheiten zu spezifischen Themen. Wir haben jetzt hier mal rausgesucht, präsentieren oder Englisch für den Einkauf. Es gibt aber noch ganz viele andere kurze Workshops und diese sind zu finden auf der Seite englisch online Minus lernen kommen. Ja, und ganz zum Schluss ähm, ein kurzes, knappes äh, Angebot oder eine Möglichkeit, vier Wochen lang, einmal die Woche 60 Minuten ähm, Englisch reden, ein bisschen chillen, ähm, vielleicht sogar mit JP, das müssen wir gucken, das soll mhm. mal beginnen. Und ähm, ohne Korrektur, einfach frei von der Leber ein bisschen reden und mal wieder ein bisschen Sicherheit in der Sprache gewinnen und seine Hemmungen überwinden, mal wieder den Einstieg in die Sprache zu finden. Und last but not least verlosen wir jetzt heute auch einen dieser Kurse, also viermal 60 Minuten Englisch-Konversationskurs. Und der Gewinner darf sogar zwei seiner Freunde mitbringen. Und ich würde jetzt in den Chat noch mal kurz den, ähm, die, die URL schreiben, wo man direkt zu dem Gewinnspiel kommt. Ich glaube, es geht auch über die Expo Lingua Seite. Aber nichtsdestotrotz ähm, einmal noch in den Chat der Link zum Gewinnspiel und ja, wer jetzt noch Lust hat oder noch Fragen hat, weil die Zeit, wir sind schon ein bisschen über die Zeit, JP, wir ja, wir ich bin jetzt hier durchgerast, wenn jemand noch Lust hat oder Fragen stellen möchte, dann gibt es die Möglichkeit direkt im Anschluss in einem anderen Zoom und zwar mit dem Link, den ich jetzt in den, in den Chat schreibe JP und ich sind noch ein paar Minuten da und, bestell, und stellen gerne, stehen gerne zur Verfügung, wenn es noch Fragen und ja, konkretere Dinge zu besprechen gibt. Wir bedanken uns ganz herzlich. Danke JP, danke an alle. Wir waren, im Moment sind wir 90, die Spitzenzahlen waren 131 Teilnehmer. Ganz toll. Viel Spaß. Toi, toi, toi fürs Sprache lernen, egal welche. Beste Grüße aus Köln und Saarbrücken. Auf Wiederhören. Ciao.